distinguished, distinguished guests, 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 colleagues, colleagues friends. friends, good afternoon. And uh, early good morning to our colleagues uh, dialing in from the United States. Thank you for your patience as we work out just a couple of technical uh, uh, challenges just to get ourselves started today, so thank you for that. Um, and welcome to the Kenya Pension Fund Investment Consortium. Uh, it's a great day to be able to have this particular milestone, and I'm thrilled to be your moderator today. My name is Roger Bird, and I'm the chief of party for USAID's Kenyan Investment Mechanism. And we're all about bringing investments into Kenya and East Africa. Uh, so let's just get started. I'd like to first welcome to, this, to the podium uh, Sandeep Rachura. He is the uh, chairman of KEFIC, and actually Sandeep has been the the uh, advocate carrying the torch that has brought us to this big milestone today. And so it's with great pleasure I welcome you, Sandeep, for some opening remarks. Super. Thank you very much, uh, Roger. And I hope you'll permit me to remove my mask. I think we're all uh, well socially distanced. So good afternoon, everybody. Our PS National Treasury, Dr. Julius Moya the Ambassador of the United States to Kenya, Ambassador Kyle Carter, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I think I should also recognize Mr. Nzomo Mutuku, the Chief Executive Officer of the Retirement Benefits Authority, the World Bank leader, Equitable Growth Finance and Institutions, Alan Dennis, who is joining us virtually. We also have the Chairman of the Association of Retirement Benefit Schemes, Mr. Simon Nyakundi, the Chairman of the Fund Managers Association, Mr. Jonathan Stichbury, we have the CEO of MIDA, uh, Amerik Saha, all dialing in from abroad, from, from uh, virtually, uh, and many, many others. So, and also members of KEPFIC. It's a great honor to be here, as Roger said, to mark a very important milestone. And as I welcome us all to the official launch of the Kenya Pension Fund Investment Consortium, I'm also filled with a lot of pride satisfaction and a sense of fulfillment. This is a culmination of more than two years of effort by a dedicated team to bring together, to bring to fruition this vision of pension funds in Kenya working collaboratively, collaboratively uh, for the benefit of our country by investing in long-term assets and being an anchor investor for co-investors from, from abroad. For the benefit of everyone, I think it'll be useful for me to just reminisce a bit, just go down memory lane on how the idea of KEPFIC was conceived. In the past few years, there's been a lot of work that has been done on introducing infra infrastructure as an investable asset class for institutional investors and pension funds in Kenya. And I'd like to recognize the World Bank here for organizing a series of workshops, initially with the asset managers in Kenya, and thereafter with the asset owners, the trustees of pension funds. And there was a growing appreciation that infrastructure and other alternative asset classes are a good investment avenue for pension funds. But there was also a recognition and an apprehension that this is a complex asset class, it is risky, um, it requires much larger ticket sizes, and therefore there was merit in working together. There was, a, there was benefit in, and there was some safety in numbers. And there were five pension funds, and I really think I ought to mention them, who started meeting actually, Paul, in the KRA boardrooms. So P.S., these were the Kenya Pipeline Pension Funds, the Kenya Revenue Authority Funds, the Kenya Power Pension Fund, the Safaricom Pension Scheme, and the Zamara Pension Fund, who talked through this and came up with the idea of creating a consortium as the best way of working together. These five funds, PS, were meeting in the KRA boardrooms and they quickly switched to the Zamara boardroom because they were worried that this should not have a government connotation. Okay? So these five pension funds agreed in principle to collaborate, to co-invest in alternative asset classes, key of these being infrastructure. We called ourselves the Big Five, borrowing our name from the Kenya Big Five. We became the Big Eight very quickly, the Big Ten, the Big Twelve, and now, I'm very pleased to say that we are 15 pension funds with a total asset base of more than 200 billion shillings who are members of KEPFIC. 
This is a mixture of public and private, private sector pension funds. In the next few months, we hope to get to 25 pension funds and eventually open this up to smaller schemes who, will, who can also benefit and enjoy and who, who want to pool their assets uh, to achieve scale. Ladies and gentlemen, the case for Kepfic, an initiative like this, is very clear. We are a growing industry, and I'm sure Mr. Mutuku will tell us later that we have crossed the 1.3 trillion shillings mark in terms of assets. We could have been a little bit higher had it not been for COVID, and individual funds are also becoming sizable in their own right. But yet, for the average pension fund, more than 80%, in many cases more than 90% of their assets, are only invested in two asset classes, a limited number of stocks and largely government securities. So this is very limited diversification, even within those two asset classes. There is very little investment taking place in the real Kenyan economy. Now, pension funds, and especially with the volatility that we've seen in the past few months, are hungry for better and more stable risk-adjusted returns for their members. And they need to diversify their portfolios to achieve this. At the same time, and Mr. Muya will tell us this, Dr. Muya, there's a huge financing gap for infrastructure in this country, estimated at more than $4 billion per year. And this is going to be beyond the capacity of government, donors, as well as the banks who have been the traditional financiers for such large projects. So there is a need to look at alternative sources of financing. And pension funds, if our risk, if our, if our risk, if our expectations in terms of risk and return are met, if the proper solutions can be structured for us, we would be interested in investing in, in such investments. And as I said earlier, these alternative asset classes have, are, are more complex. They require much larger ticket sizes. And the consortium approach to investing enables us to consider such investment opportunities together and create the scale that we need to invest and have the bargaining power at the table. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say that at Kepfic, we have put a huge amount of effort in ensuring that we have the highest governance standards. We have a robust investment policy that brings clarity on the type of assets that CAPFIC would consider, the exposures that we are willing to take, our appetite for risk, as well as our expectations for returns. And our aim is to eventually make CAPFIC a fully operational investment platform that has the local capacity to mobilize long-term local currency capital, to work collaboratively with global funds, to source and structure investments in alternative asset classes, that provide good returns, as well as have a high developmental impact. And to talking about development impact, it's important for us to understand that infrastructure development is a very key driver for progress in Kenya, and indeed in Africa, and indeed is a critical enabler for trade, private enterprise, for uh, sustainable economic growth, as well as achieving the sustainable development goals, the SDGs. And as a pensions industry, as pension schemes, through KEPFIC, we can play our rightful role as mobilizers of domestic capital into our real economy. And not just in Kenya, within the wider Eastern Africa region as well, and perhaps in Africa as well. And hence, the mission of KEPFIC being to pool assets of members' pension schemes to co-invest co in alternative assets these, Dr. Muya, include core infrastructure supporting trade and agriculture. Here we're talking about power generation, distribution, transports, highways, bridges, connecting our major manufacturing centers, agriculture production centers, water, which is a big area of need in our country, social infrastructure with a focus on health and education, as well as real estate, affordable housing, and related local manufacturing. Our vision, our aim, is to mobilize more than 25 billion shillings in the next three to five years from local pension funds who commit to invest up to 5% of their assets in alternative asset classes and working with UK pension funds, US pension funds, and South African pension funds who have expressed an interest 
in working with us. I'd like at this stage to acknowledge the excellent collaboration that we've had with MEDA, mobilizing in institutional investors to invest to develop Africa's infrastructure. And really happy that today we're formalizing our partnership with them to benefit from more capacity building for trustee to trustee knowledge sharing and create a win-win of co-investment opportunities. Ladies and gentlemen, earlier this year, we engaged a full-time secretariat to handle Kepfix operations and, asked, and to implement our strategy. We appointed Spearhead, and Gatia has been very instrumental doing a lot of work in the last few, in the last few years, in the last few months, sorry. And uh, I really want to say a very, very big thank you to the USAID who have agreed to finance our operations for the next three years, subject to achieving a number of milestones. I want to say a very special thank you to you, Ambassador, for the support that you have personally given to the US government and USAID. I also want to mention the World Bank, who have been super supportive of all our efforts, have facilitated a lot of technical assistance for us, and have committed to us to support us as we require. I want to say a very special thank you to the Retirement Benefits Authority, ZOMO. You've been outstanding and a very good supporter. And PS, through you to the government of Kenya for your continued support. And we look forward to further engagement with the government on what pension funds can do in this country and how we can be real catalysts for economic growth. So ladies and gentlemen, to conclude, we have a big vision as Kepfik. And I'm confident that we will be able to demonstrate that it is possible for pension funds to come together, to collaborate, and invest into funds, other capital market instruments that will invest in the productive sectors of our economy to stimulate economic growth and job creation. KEPFIC is an initiative by pension funds, for pension funds. We are an advocate for pension funds and we are open for business. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to me. Thank you very much, Sandeep. And, um, Thanks for giving us a perspective of just how many moving parts there are in putting something like this together. Uh, it's great to be able to, to hear about some of those early stage meetings and to have gone from the big five to the big 15 to the next big thing that we can see actually happening. So congratulations on that. Uh, next, I'd like to, to introduce the Secretariat of KEFIC, Gatia uh, Kiringure. Um, he has been just uh, really become a, uh, a brother with purpose uh, as he and I uh, jointly work to be able to, to move uh, the, the whole KEFIC initiative forward. So, Gatia, please, you're welcome. Thank you very much, Roger. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, those of you here physically and those who are dialing in and watching virtually. My name is Ngatia Kirongie, and I am the head of the KEPFIC Secretariat. And we thought we would take you through a little bit more about who we are and what we are trying to achieve. Next slide. Next slide. So a little bit more about us, as you have heard, KEPFIC is a consortium of local pension funds that have come together to jointly co-invest in long-term infrastructure and alternative assets in the region, not just in Kenya, in East Africa, and we, we also have ambitions for the greater African continent. Like Sandeep mentioned, we have a five-year target of investing at least, mobilizing and investing at least $250 million into these opportunities, all while providing our members with competitive returns and diversification opportunities. At the same time, we aim to build the technical and investment capacity of not just our member funds and their trustees, but of the ecosystem as a whole. So that includes their fund managers, it includes the administrators, and it also includes the general public to help, uh, to help spread the awareness of what we are trying to achieve. And finally, we want to be the collective voice representing these pension schemes, 
to the um, pension scheme community on policy and regulatory matters, especially those related to infrastructure investment. Next slide. Our goals, like Sandeep mentioned, first is to establish a pool of funding for infrastructure asset investments and to assess and select suitable investment opportunities. We also hope to attract co-investment from, from international investors, which I will come to, as well as building the cap capacity of our member funds and growing our membership in, to enhance collaboration between retirement funds. And finally, advocate for our members' interests, like I mentioned, on policy matters. Our partners from the very beginning have been extremely supportive. They include USAID to their various programs, the World Bank Group, and media advisors. And though we are a young initiative, we have been recognized on the continent um, for the impact we, we look to achieve, and we were recognized as the Pension Fund Infrastructure Initiative of the Year at the 2019 Africa in in Investment Awards. Now, turning to the infrastructure outlook in Africa, I think it will come as no surprise to many of us in this room that we have a significant funding gap that needs to be bridged. If you look at Africa as a whole, we're looking at $70 billion annually. And in Kenya, the figure is north of $2 billion every year. Uh, unsurprisingly, the areas of focus have been energy and transport. However, um, East Africa has lagged behind our regional peers in terms of the geographic allocation of these infrastructure investments. So we lag behind West Africa with just under 26%, North Africa with just under 20%, uh, Republic of South Africa, and finally East Africa comes in at 14.2%. 14, 14 Next slide. In terms of the funding sources, uh, you can see that at 37.2%, governments are the leading um, source of funding for infrastructure investments. However, although they are the leading source, they are also a weakening source currently. And that's largely because many African governments face growing budget deficits as well as competing needs. At this point, you know, we can point to healthcare and food security as much needed competing needs that, you know, that will channel uh, government resources to. Private sector only accounts for 11.7%, giving us significant room for greater private sector participation in infrastructure investments. Mm -hmm. So for the pension schemes in the room and those who are watching virtually, why are infrastructure investments good for your portfolio? Well, we have you know, five very brief um, um, you know, points that we would like to hit home. The first is that infrastructure investments offer competitive returns and a reliable stream of liquidity. We also have to remember that these investments are long-term in nature which is a very good thing considering that they will allow you to match your long-term liabilities on one hand with a long-term asset. And these long-term assets, the returns that they do generate are often linked to inflation, which means that your real return is protected even when you look 20, 30 years into the future. Infrastructure assets provide essential services and are therefore minimally affected by economic cycles. And what that means is that your returns will also have very low volatility. A very important point right now when we're seeing that the equity markets being very volatile, um, and like Sandeep said, there's very little choice other than the two, uh, the two asset classes, government bonds and stocks. And so finally, infrastructure investments provide a diversification, diversification opportunity. That's because they, they provide, I mean, the, the assets themselves have a very low correlation to the performance of the stock market or the bond market. So what are the benefits of investing through KEPFIC? Uh, we mentioned uh, the pooling of resources together, and that's what we, we refer to here as economies of scale. This is quite important, especially for the smaller pension funds that on their own would be unable to invest into infrastructure effectively. And this has been further enhanced by recent, um, recent changes in the RBA investment guidelines allowing pension schemes to invest up to 10% of their assets into infrastructure uh, opportunities. Beyond that, infrastructure is a highly complex uh, asset class that requires significant due diligence that can be quite expensive. So rather than each of our 1,300 schemes going through the process 
of uh, paying for the due diligence, we, we thought it's a good idea for us to do it collectively and thereby share on those costs. Secondly, capacity building. Like I mentioned, we're looking to build the, tr the trustee um, uh, capacity and to, uh, to help them understand infrastructure investments just as well as they understand stocks, bonds, and property. We're also looking to, um, uh, the other benefit is to, is to co-invest with global pension funds. As much as we are 1,300 pension schemes, when we overlay that with US pension funds, it means we can look at even larger opportunities, which is very exciting for us as Capfic. I mentioned advocacy efforts. We'll be representing you to the regulator and in policy matter discussions. And our members will also benefit from the investment support from our implementation partners, including USAID, the World Bank, and others. CAPFIC will also bring together like-minded pension schemes and help with collaboration and networking between them. And we hope to be a source of research, insight, as well as provide the risk mitigation uh, strategies for the investments that we do get into. Next slide. We thought we'd, we'd speak a little bit more about the co-investment with US pension schemes, especially considering we're about to sign the uh, MOU with MIDA currently. So, Kepfik has partnered with the Mobilizing Institutional Investors to develop Africa's infrastructure, or MIDA for short, which is sponsored, supported by USAID's INVEST program. And MIDA essentially specializes in facilitating US institutional investments and trade into Africa. The photo you can see to your left it was taken uh, in 2019 when MIDA led a delegation of 30 US pension schemes and asset managers to the country uh, who are all interested in investing in Kenyan infrastructure and African infrastructure. And these schemes represent a, a whopping $1 trillion worth of assets. So if we can tap into, into their funding, uh, the sky is the limit for us. So in a nutshell, Kepfik through MIDA, um, have, through MIDA we have partnered, uh, we have established a partnership between US pension schemes and ourselves to explore these infrastructure co-investments, um, and not just in Kenya, like I mentioned, and not just infrastructure, but can also be alternative assets. Next slide. So we just want to encourage you to visit us when you have a moment. We are based in Westlands at Delta Corner. Um, our website is also up today, and we would be very welcome to hosting you and, and uh, taking you a little bit more through what we're trying to achieve. And with that, I will hand back to Roger for the next step in the, in the program, which I believe is the video. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, uh, Gatia. And, and it truly is a pleasure working with you and your team um, to be able to, uh, to move things along as quickly and as, as, as uh, rapidly as you've been able to do. Uh, next, uh, we'd like to introduce the Kefik uh, launch video. And with, without any further ado, let's roll it. In the search for optimal returns, Kenyan pension funds, like those the world over, continue to scout for profitable and impactful investment opportunities. While most pension funds have traditionally invested in government securities and blue chip stocks, investments in infrastructure and other alternative asset classes present an innovative, profitable, and long-term sustainable opportunity. The Kenya Pension Funds Investment Consortium, KEPFIC, is a consortium of Kenyan retirement benefit funds that have come together to make long-term infrastructure and alternative asset investments in the region. Infrastructure investments offer attractive returns, portfolio diversification benefits, and match long-term assets to long-term liabilities, and over the next five years, Kepfik aims to mobilize 250 million US dollars from Kenyan pension funds and offshore core investors for investment in impactful infrastructure assets. To do this, Kepfik aims to identify suitable infrastructure opportunities, pool investment capital from local pension funds and core investors, and build the technical and investment capacity of our member funds to enable them to make informed infrastructure investment decisions. Infrastructure, by its very nature, is a very complex investment class. It requires costly due diligence and research, and the amounts required or the ticket sizes are beyond the capacities 
and regulatory limits for individual pension funds. And indeed, when you look at the pension fund industry in Kenya, we have 1,300 pension funds, and most of these are too small. And even the larger ones would struggle to invest in infrastructure on their own. Kenya faces a significant infrastructure financing deficit estimated at 2.1 billion US dollars annually, a deficit that cannot be met by public resources alone. While historically, infrastructure has been the domain of national and county governments, there is a significant opportunity for private sector participation as more private capital seeks longer-term steady returns while governments are faced with much-needed competing priorities such as healthcare, food security and education. Infrastructure presents an attractive yet underutilized investment opportunity for pension funds and the involvement of private institutions will not only contribute to Kenya's economic growth and transformation as a whole but also to better project governance structures by adopting global best practices. Thanks to a recent provision in the Retirement Benefits Authority Investment Guidelines, Kenyan pension funds can now invest up to 10% of their assets into infrastructure effectively unlocking over 1 billion US dollars into the asset class. We have recently amended our investment guidelines to allow schemes to invest a portion of the assets in infrastructure. We are therefore very supportive of KEFIC's mission uh, to bring together different pension schemes and other stakeholders which are keen on investing in this area of infrastructure and is also bringing together other stakeholders uh, to develop the infrastructure investment agenda. KEPFIC was recognized as the Pension Fund Infrastructure Initiative of the Year at the 2019 Africa Investor Awards held in Cape Town, South Africa, further validating its mission and shining a brighter light on the East Africa infrastructure investment opportunity globally. The consortium has also received technical support from USAID and the World Bank to help local member funds navigate the infrastructure investment terrain and by working with the mobilizing institutional investors to develop Africa's infrastructure initiative MIDA, KEPFIC has further leveraged its mission and established a partnership with US-based pension funds with total assets under management in excess of 1 trillion US dollars to explore infrastructure co-investment opportunities in the region. KEFIC presents an innovative approach to investments that will catalyze critically needed sources of private sector capital for infrastructure development. This comes at a time when national and county governments are facing growing budget deficits and competing priorities in healthcare, affordable housing, education, and food security. USAID's Kenyan Investment Mechanism is pleased to partner with Kenya Pension Fund Investment Consortium to support this expanded source of new capital. Mira Advisors has been supporting CAFE in the creation of a local consortium of pension funds to invest in infrastructure. We're working under the umbrella of the U.S. Agency for International Development. Our goal is to support a strong partnership between American pension funds and Kenyan pension funds. And American pension funds need a critical partner in the region, and like-minded investors that are working for the benefit of its retirees and that are looking to undertake economically important projects in infrastructure, in housing, supporting job creation and economic development in the region. By joining KEPFIC, pension funds will participate in infrastructure investments and enjoy several benefits such as economies of scale in the infrastructure investment selection, structuring and due diligence processes, capacity building through live deal analysis and project site tours, regular investment workshops with experts in infrastructure investment and networking sessions with like-minded local and foreign pension funds, co-investments with global pension funds, technical support from implementation partners in the investment selection and execution process, and finally, advocacy efforts by representing its members' interests in regular engagements with regulators and external stakeholders and contributing to supportive policy measures. Investing in infrastructure for us is an interesting asset class because it provides an opportunity for us to make a difference in the development of our country as well as other regions. What we benefit by working together as CAPFIC is access to knowledge, access to risk management, and access to partnership with other like-minded investment vehicles. KEPFIC, mobilizing institutional capital for impactful infrastructure investments.
Great, that was beautifully done. Um, you know, as uh, chief of party for uh, USAID funded activity, um, I know from firsthand experience the strong commitment from the United States in partnership with Kenya. And so it's with real great pleasure that I um, introduce and invite uh, U.S. Ambassador uh, Kyle McCarter up to uh, give a, some few remarks. Thank you, sir. Well, good afternoon. Um, this is the time when my staff is always waiting to see what I added to the words that they gave me. Um, let me reassure you, it's very little, but uh, I'm uh, very pleased to uh, join you today to celebrate the official launch of the Kenyan Pension Fund Investment Consortium. This forward-thinking group of leading private Kenyan pension fund managers are joining forces to address two challenges facing Kenyans. One, generating higher and safer returns for Kenyan retire retirees, and two, meeting Kenyans' significant gap in infrastructure investment financing, which has been said is estimated to be at about $2.1 billion per year. Pension funds are ideal to fund infrastructure projects due to longer return on investment horizons. I did notice on the map, uh, on one of the slides, there was Kenya, there was a dot, and then there was a line going southeaster to the coast. I don't know what that line was. I think it was a highway, um, and, and, uh, and that may be just a little hint for some of you as far as investing. But, um, but they play a big role in financing infrastructure projects in many countries, including the United States. Individual pension funds in Kenya don't always have the capacity to venture into big ticket infrastructure projects alone. Uh, Kefik, uh, not to be confused with all the other KEPSA, KEMSA uh, acronyms, I, we wanna make clear that today that this is a private this is uh, focusing on the private sector and we'll have nothing to do with uh, um, the behavior of others. Uh, KEPFIC offers a solution to this challenge by pulling together resources from individual funds. KEPFIC intends to mobilize more than $250 million over the next five years for infrastructure investment. I would, uh, I would just add, I would challenge you to much greater than that. Uh, KEFIC will not only invest their own assets, but they will seek investments from international partners as well. KEFIC has found a strong partner in the United States, I believe the best partner. The American and Kenyan people enjoy a robust friendship we call USA Marafiki, meaning, and I, I want you to know where this comes from, 30, um, uh, we, we're at, uh, I'm sorry, it's 20, 25 agencies within the U.S. Embassy and um, sometimes people get confused at what we do. This is the American people extending their generosity to Kenya to help Kenya succeed. And that's what we call friendship, and that's why we, we mention that alone, uh, not to be confused with the generosity of the American people. In 2018, President Trump and Pre President Kenyatta elevated our 57-year re relationship to a strategic partnership in July of this year, our two nations launched historic negotiations on a U.S.-Kenya free trade agreement that will expand and strengthen trade between the United States and Kenya and provide a new model for deepening U.S.-Africa trade to replace AGOA when it expires in 2025. It is my conviction that Kenya go from aid to trade. I think it's the more respectable response. It's what you do as a friend. A vibrant private sector is essential to Kenya's future. My top priority in the bilateral economic and commercial relationship is supporting the expanded trade and investment ties between our two countries. Despite the challenges of terrorism and corruption facing Kenya, more US firms are choosing Nairobi as their regional hub. Last year, I was pleased to welcome a delegation of U.S. pension funds from the United States National Association of Securities Professionals, 
or NASP, representing one trillion in US pension fund assets, who traveled to Kenya to meet with Kepfix founders and explore new investment opportunities in Kenya's power, road, and other sectors. Uh, I, might, I might add that uh, uh, a lot of that money was from my home state of Illinois. And uh, some of that was my wife's money in the teacher's pension fund. Um, I wish them the best of success. Today, those conversations um, have taken concrete steps forward with the signature of an MOU between Kepfic and NAF's strategic partner, Mita Advisors, that will support the vetting and promotion of East Africa's investment, uh, infrastructure investment opportunities for Kenya and the US investors. My moving from traditional investments to new op opportunities like local power plants, roads, like the one I mentioned, and, enterprise, and enterprises, Kenyan and US pension funds can strengthen commercial ties between Kenya and the United States, benefiting both of our countries. Through the US government Power uh, Africa and, Pow and, and Prosper Africa initiatives, we've, com we've committed up to $1 million to support KEPFIC alongside other investments from partners like the World Bank. I also applaud the government of Kenya's contribution to this effort, including recent regulatory changes that encourage investments in infrastructure. Private investment in infrastructure projects contributes to better governance as a result of greater participation in project selection, stakeholder engagement, and management of the asset. KEFIC will set a high and much needed benchmark for a transparency in capital intensive infrastructure investments and reduce opportunities for corruption. Um, you, you know, I, th this discussion of the private sector is very important to me. You know, they say if you want a job right, go find a woman. If you want a booming economy, uh, it's best for the government to get out of the way and en engage the private sector. And I believe there's support from Kenyan leadership today for that. Uh, this is, uh, we know this works, and uh, at times it's best just to step out of the way and let the private sector establish those new ben benchmarks for corruption-free, um, uh, robust economies. Through initiatives such as Power Africa, Prosper, uh, 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 and Feed the Future, the United States government provides workforce development, co-investments, co and investment ad advisory services to local firms that create jobs and provide critical goods and services. Through Power Africa, the United States government is supporting Kenya's efforts to meet its energy sector goals by mobilizing long-term local capital to finance new projects. Power Africa provides technical assistance, grant and debt funding for development of new power generation plants, and supports increased efficiencies and improved regulatory frameworks to spur increased private sector investment in the energy sector. The United States government also supports US firms looking to do business in Kenya, such as uh, ambitious infrastructure projects like that road I just talked to you about, Bechtel's proposal to build a world-class Nairobi Mombasa Highway. And we're working to broaden and deepen domestic debt markets through the Kenyan National Treasury and Kenya Central Bank. Today's launch of KEFIC is another milestone in our work together towards shared prosperity and growth for the Kenyan and the American people. I look forward to working with you to strengthen collaboration between the United States and Kenyan pension fund investors and to advance private investment in Kenya's infrastructure to build a strong, much stronger Kenya. May God bless you. Happy investing. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador McCarter. And um, I'd like to uh, say that I, I believe, Ambassador, that uh, uh, the team is ready to rise to the challenge that you're talking about of doing something greater than the 250 because I was watching both uh, Gatti and Sandeep as, as you were speaking that and they both were nodding their heads, so we're excited. 
Um, the next step is um, we're going to take just a very short break. The ambassador needs to get to another meeting and leave the uh, premise by 3 p.m. Uh, and we're, so we're going to take a short uh, moment just to do a quick photo op. So for those of you at home watching, uh, I think you may actually see that happening live. But that's what's going to happen over the next uh, five to seven minutes. So we'll be back with you in a few moments. Excellent, and for all you viewers uh, at home dialing in, uh, thank you for that, uh, that brief break. Um, the, next, I'd like to invite um, the World Bank Program Leader, Equitable F uh, Growth, Finance, and Institutions, uh, Mr. Alan Dennis, and I believe he's joining us virtually. Hello. I hope you can hear me. Um, so it is a real pleasure for me to be here and I'm really excited about um, the launch of, of CAPFIC. Um, I first want to acknowledge uh, my good friend, Dr. Uh, Muya, PS National um, Treasury. I also want to acknowledge the presence of the CEO of RBA, um, Mr. Nzomo uh, Mutuku, um, Ambassador Kyle um, McCarter, and uh, various leaders of the private sector um, represented here, uh, ladies and, and gentlemen, good afternoon. As I said, it is a pleasure for me to be among um, so many distinguished uh, guests in the finance industry this afternoon and all those connected um, from around the world. The World Bank is very proud to have supported um, CAPFIC since its um, inception. The launch, today's launch, is a result of over three years of efforts to raise awareness of pension funds, trustees, fund managers, and regulators on why pension funds should consider inf uh, investing in infrastructure financing. Kenya has a large and dynamic pension fund industry with long-term liabilities which match the maturity of infrastructure assets. In this regard, given the size that Kenya has, if you compare Kenya to other countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, Kenya, I believe, is uniquely placed to take advantage of the opportunities that exist in infrastructure finance and within Kenya, but also as mentioned uh, within the sub-region and perhaps the wider um, continent. Also, Ke Kenya has um, vast needs when it comes to its infrastructure development. I believe one of the slides had earlier shown that the um, estimated annual financing for infrastructure alone is about $2.1 billion. For, uh, for up until now, a lot of that financing has been shouldered on uh, basically the sovereign. But given the situation, the fiscal um, situation, having significantly narrowed, particularly in recent years, it is clear that that cannot continue, especially if Kenya is going to close the important um, 
infrastructure um, financing deficit that exists. So this makes it, so it therefore makes sense for um, funds such as Kenya pension funds to support uh, local infrastructure investment as well as even sub-regional infrastructure investments. I would also add that this is very much consistent with um, what we seek to do at the World Bank. The World Bank goals are to reduce poverty and to boost shared prosperity. Now, how do you do that? I mean, a lot of studies that we have done show that people come out of poverty when they find jobs and productive jobs at that. And who are the ones that create the jobs? It is the private sector that creates the jobs. The government can create the enabling environment so as to be able to crowd in the needed private investment that will create an environment where good jobs, productive jobs can be created. The government cannot create all the jobs that are needed, and one, especially when one looks at the demographic profile. So um, this is a very important uh, agenda also for the World Bank, especially so given that access to finance is, is also one of the major, whenever you speak to business people, the major constraints, but not just any kind of finance. It's even more acute when it comes to long-term, access to long-term financing. And that's where um, um, the, the industry such as yours, um, pension funds come in to, be, to hopefully be able to solve a development challenge. For us at the World Bank, three principles under, underpin our support to CAPFIC. First, the need to develop the long-term local currency debt for public private infrastructure projects. This is important since hard currency financing either increases government's contingent liabilities or results in unsustainable pass-throughs to consumers. We have examples in hand even now in the, in the energy sector. We believe that pension funds are uniquely positioned to provide long-term and local currency debt. Secondly, supporting the management of risks by investors. Risk management is supported by ensuring that the pension funds invest in infrastructure debt as opposed to infrastructure equity. While returns may be more attractive for infrastructure equity compared to debt, they may take more time to materialize than in classic private equity funds. Debt also offers regular returns and matches pension funds liabilities profile. Third, the World Bank strongly supports the need to ensure robust governance and transparency practices by ensuring that the interest of whomever manages the infrastructure investments are aligned to the pension funds and that investments are subject to strong ethics, reporting and transparency requirements. Let me conclude by saying that we are delighted to see that CAPFIC is coming to fruition and wish you all the best in your journey. Congratulations and thank you. Great, thank you very much, Alan. Um, next on the program is the Retirement Benefits Authority CEO, Mr. M Nuzomo Mutuku. Mutu excuse me, Mutuku. Pardon me, sir. Uh, the PS National Treasury, uh, Dr. Julius Muya, uh, is actually an ambassador uh, from the United States of America, representatives from USAID, uh, the World Bank, MIDA, uh, my industry players, um, who I you know I presented online, uh, ARBS, Fund Manager Association and others, scheme trustees, the Big 15, uh, CAFIC, uh, the trustees of those schemes, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, 2020 is a special year for us in RBA uh, because it actually marks um, 20 years since RBA was formed. And October is a special month for us because we were actually formed in um, October. And this month we are kicking off our 20th anniversary celebrations. So it is really a great pleasure for me to be here that the launch of CAFIC is taking place uh, today in this auspicious year 
and this auspicious month uh, for us in, in RBA. Um, of course, we know 2020 has been a challenging year. Um, in our industry, the pensions industry, we have received a number of shocks. Uh, we have investment shocks because we've seen the markets go down. We have contribution shocks because employers are unable to contribute and have taken holidays. And of course, we also have withdrawal shocks because members have even been retrenched and have left and picked uh, their, their benefits. So it's been a difficult year, uh, but nevertheless, I'm happy to say that um, uh, between December and June, we were able to see some growth in the industry. As was mentioned earlier, we are able to move from 1.21 billion, 1.21 1 trillion Kenya shillings to 1.32 trillion Kenya shillings. So the industry has proved resilient. Uh, despite all these shocks, uh, we have still been able to, um, uh, to register some growth. Also this year, um, you'll be happy to note that um, when um, Alliance Group did their 2020 survey of the global pensions industries, uh, they ranked our industry in Kenya number two in Africa, which is a real great honor of our pensions industry. Uh, if you look at our economy and so on, we are not normally number two in Africa, but in terms of pensions, we are number two. So that was a great honor. And it shows again the resilience and the strength of our, of our pensions um, industry. But notwithstanding that uh, good performance, of course, um, there's still a lot of work that we need to do to grow our industry. And one of the issues which has been raised uh, by a number of speakers is the need for more diversification in terms of our pension uh, investment. And it was for this reason um, that um, we were very happy um, that um, the National Treasury uh, gazetted uh, the proposal we had in terms of increasing or having a new asset class for, for infrastructure investment. And that asset class allows up to 10% uh, investment. So I think this is why uh, the ambassador was challenging us on the figure of two, uh, $50 million, because if you take 10% of uh, 1.3 trillion, um, that's 130 billion, which is $1.3 billion. So there's still room between the 250 that uh, we are targeting <laughs> and the 1.3 that we have allowed uh, as the regulator. <coughs> um, so we welcome uh, that, um, that change. And uh, we also um, appreciate um, you know, what has been said about uh, the need for closing the infrastructure gap. And we have always been supportive of our pension schemes, being able to invest in areas that give them diversification, give them good returns, but also support you know, economic priorities of the government and help to uplift, uplift um, the standard of living of, of Kenyans. And no doubt infrastructure is, um, is one of these. However, investing in infrastructure is not so straightforward. It's not um, a well-known asset class. Um, and that is why we really appreciate uh, KEFIC because KEFIC is bringing together a number of schemes so they can overcome the challenges of investment in infrastructure by working together. Doing a due diligence of uh, infrastructure project is a difficult and expensive exercise. Uh, but when you come together, uh, you know, as a group of schemes, you're able to uh, meet those challenges as a group and uh, overcome them. Uh, the other issue, of course, of infrastructure is, um, is not a well understood group, uh, not a well understood um, asset. And there's a knowledge gap as well that needs to be to be filled. And we really want to take this opportunity to appreciate uh, USAID, uh, World Bank, uh, MIDA and many others who have helped us in terms of carrying out more uh, sensitization and education of scheme trustees and fund managers and others. Um, about this new, uh, this new asset, um, this new asset class. So, on behalf of um, RBA, I really want to congratulate uh, Kefik on this occasion of the launch. Uh, we shall continue to support. Uh, we have done our part in terms of regulatory framework. So, Kasa Kazi Kwenu, Asanteni. Mr. Matuku, and thank you uh, very much for the uh, regulatory transparency and uh, uh, that the RBA brings to uh, to the table with this, uh, and particularly congratulations on 20 years. That's really an awesome milestone. Uh, our next speaker is joining us uh, virtually as well, uh, the MEDA CEO, Emmerich Saha. Emmerich? Emmerich? Thank you very much. It's a pleasure for me to join you from Washington, D.C. 
and uh, good afternoon to everyone in uh, Nairobi. Uh, on this uh, special day, I am very pleased to congratulate CAFEG on your official launch as an entity. Uh, we heard from uh, your chair, Sandeep, that you are open for business, and it's a remarkable achievement. Congratulations, CAFEG and uh, Mira Advisors working uh, under the U.S. Uh, AID Invest project. We're very pleased to partner with you, and we look forward to next steps. In this moment of reflection today, I am reminded that uh, it was in 2019 last year when Mira conducted its first delegation of U.S. asset owners to Nairobi in partnership with really Kefig back then uh, that we started discussing how under a new partnership with USAID, how we can ensure that you have the resources, the technical assistance to really enable the full potential of CAFIC as a legal entity and with the creation of a secretariat. I remember particularly in this conference room uh, after our joint meeting between US pension funds and Kenyan pension funds, back then Brooke Adam from the mission, USAID mission in Kenya, Cameron Khosrowshahi from the DC office, Sundeep, uh, Ken, Constantine, CAFEC steering committee members, and a team from the Kenyan investment mechanism sat around the corner conference room and discussed how can we boost the partnership? How can we ensure that CAFEC becomes a legal entity, has the technical assistance, has the partnership in place with other foreign investors that are looking to co-invest in Kenya? How can we ensure this works? And here we are, from back then in April 2019 to today, and it's remarkable the progress that has been achieved. And I'm so pleased to join you today on this special occasion. And I say all that, that because despite the pandemic, and we know how difficult it's been for the industry, for your members to still mobilize their savings uh, into retirements, despite all that, we still kept forward with the agenda of investing in infrastructure, which is so critically important for a economic recovery in Kenya and in Africa. We are going to talk about those achievements and what we have accomplished on Friday. And I look forward to making my remarks there to talk about specific case studies of how US investors can co-invest with Kenyan pension funds. But let me highlight maybe three specific items in my short remarks today. I want to particularly be uh, you know, thanking uh, Ngacha your head of the secretariat for enabling CAFIC to become a legal entity, to have the resources behind the secretariat to move this agenda forward. I know how hard he's been working with his team and we're very pleased to be partner with him to support you in that process going forward. Second, I wanna highlight the fact that through CAFIC steering committee, CAFIC has become a model for creating consortiums of pension funds throughout the rest of the continent. The need for investing in alternatives is critically important in Africa. And CAFIC has a presence in Kenya working with the regulator. We just heard from, from the, the CEO of the uh, regulator, uh, regulator agency in Kenya, uh, who has been tremendous in providing the enabling environment and regulations in, in, in Kenya. We see that as a model. CAFIC is working with the private sector, with the government, and with foreign investors and other development partners like the World Bank. It's become a model for a solution that is critically needed across the continent. And I want to tremendously recognize you for, for achieving that. And thirdly, and we'll talk about this on Friday, we're already seeing co-investments. We're already seeing the fruits of investing together between US pension funds and CAFIC members. And we're going to discuss that on Friday. Let me maybe also take a moment here to, again, thank the ambassador. He was with us back then in uh, Nairobi in April, 2019. And Ambassador uh, Calvin Carter has also been here with us today. I want to thank him for his leadership, providing us with the direction to forge these ties and partnership between U.S. asset owners and Kenyan pension funds for investing together in the private sector. I want to highlight the partnership with the World Bank. I know that uh, Katiana Garcia Kiroy and Caroline Sirudi, who have been through so many missions with me in Kenya, working with CAPFIC, over the last past two years, they're not here with us today, but I want to recognize their leadership as well. 
I want to further recognize U.S. pension funds that have been with us in Kenya that are seeking co-investment with Catholic members, the mission in Kenya, and all the partners that are co joining us today in this launching of Catholic. I look forward to working with you. We look forward to supporting you with all the uh, technical resources on the USDID Invest and Ken. And I look forward to seeing you all on Friday. Congratulations, Cafe. We look forward to working with you. Thank you so very much, Emmerich. And uh, congratulations to you as well on the MOU between um, Mita and Cafe. Um, next, um, uh, next, another great advocate and, uh, and, and partner, I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Julius Moya, uh, Principal Secretary of the National Treasury. Uh, good afternoon, uh, those of us in Kenya, and uh, I believe in the U.S. It is uh, early morning, so good uh, morning to our friends in the U.S. I want uh, to recognize the uh, ambassador, as though he has left uh, to Kenya from the U.S., uh, my friend uh, Ambassador Nakata. I want to recognize uh, all the friends uh, from USAID, uh, our friends from World Bank, uh, our good people from the uh, uh, banking sector, from the pension sector, and Zoma Mutuku, uh, who is my colleague in government, and uh, many other uh, distinguished participants who are here, and say it is really a pleasure for me to come here and witness this uh, very uh, important occasion of launching of this uh, CAPFI. Now, I know there has been a lot of thinking behind it, and um, I've known Sandeep Rachura for over 20 years. And I've known him for somebody who uh, picks something and goes down to the nitty gritty. So I'm not surprised that we are here, uh, Sandeep. Uh, and this is a testimony uh, to the focus that you have on the things that you do, uh, working with uh, the big 15 now. And who knows, there will be big something else uh, as we go. Uh, so Sandeep and team, I want to say congratulations. Uh, Roger. This is good. I remember we talked uh, last week and we talked about uh, good things to come and uh, you mentioned to me about uh, this event. Although I had not yet received the invite, uh, I kept on asking my people, where is this card? <laughs> and then after a while I had not seen it, uh, then uh, Roger sent it to me by WhatsApp. And so we are that close, we are that serious about uh, uh, this engagement between uh, Kenya and the US uh, to make sure that uh, those things that we talk about are not left as theories. I want us to be able to move to the point of action, to the point of delivery. And so for us in the National Treasury, uh, this is very important, uh, what we are doing uh, today, uh, because where we sit in government to mobilize resources and then allocate the resources uh, amongst what economists uh, tell us, they are ones that are unlimited, um, and so for us, it is actually a challenge uh, to get those resources because um, we have this challenge uh, that um, at one time IMF uh, did mention it uh, about um, the challenge of one, uh, citizens wanting a lot of development. Then secondly, people not wanting to pay taxes and then finally, you have the situation where uh, people don't want you to borrow as a government. And so we have uh, that challenge in, in three, three stages that we have to face as government. And for us in National Treasury, it is, it is real. And so when we have opportunities where instead of relying on the traditional sources of revenue, that is tax, and that is going out to borrow, we welcome that uh, initiative uh, with our both hands. And so for this reason, we are very excited about uh, this coming together of the Big 15, assisted, and uh, thank you USAID for this uh, support that you are giving us. Um, because then it is that collaboration 
It is that partnership, it is that togetherness, which in uh, SDG goal 17 is identified as one of the important things of us working together. And even if you look at the adage that is going on in uh, our discussions, uh, we have just finished our annual meetings of World Bank and IMF. We are talking about building back together and in a better way, building better uh, together. And, and therefore, that togetherness is what we are demonstrating here. Now, there's something that I wanted to share uh, this uh, afternoon as um, I was preparing to come uh, to this uh, event. And one of the things that is very clear to us is that the engine of development is the private sector. And the private sector has what it takes to support development. I say this because if you go to classical economics, we talk about the four factors of production. We talk about land, we talk about capital, we talk about uh, entrepreneurship, and what is the, th the fourth one? I don't have economists here. Land, capital, entrepreneurship, what am I missing? Labor. So if you think about those classical economists uh, thinking about uh, production, all those are available in the private sector. And so for us, where we can identify a project with the revenues that you can ring fence, is such that private sector can identify those revenues and also with risks that can be reduced in a de-risking manner. Then we say that is a proper candidate for the private sector to come in. And so for me, in terms of the pension funds uh, being together, that is a sure pool of resources that private sector can tap into to invest in development projects. Now therefore, for us, what we have done uh, to capture then that money from the private sector is to push the agenda of the public-private partnership. And I want at this juncture to thank World Bank uh, because World Bank has held our hands since the enactment of the public-private partnership law uh, way back in 2013 uh, in terms of strengthening our secretariat of public-private partnership. And I want to say as a result of that, we now have two big roads that are currently um, almost being developed. One of them is actually being developed. The other one is just about where we have reached commercial uh, closure in terms of public-private partnership. We have the Nairobi Expressway, and we have got the Na Nairobi Nakuru Mao Summit Road. And together, those two, the investment is about 2.1 billion shillings. And so, we actually have, in a way, closed some infrastructure gap for one year by doing those two roads through the public-private partnership. And so what I want to encourage the pension industry is to smell the coffee. Because as we have been engaging with investors in the public-private partner space, what we've realized is that a lot of the money, in fact, almost over 95% of the funding is obtained from outside Kenya. And yet, according to Sandeep and uh, our friends here, we have got over 1,300 pension schemes in the country. And so what I want to encourage us is to think of a way of being proactive, and I want to invite uh, you as a group, uh, KEPFIC, to come and engage with my office so that we can identify what is this that we need to do together so that the pension funds can be invested locally. And that is just by a way of deepening the domestic market. And at the same time, we have got um, our relationship with the pension uh, funds in the US, and that will also provide a mechanism uh, for those uh, pension schemes to invest uh, locally. And so my office doors are indeed open, uh, both literally and um, uh, in, in philosophically, uh, for you to come, uh, Sandeep and uh, Tim. Uh, that's what I'm offering. I want also to offer, if there is any policy that requires change, any new policy 
to make sure that the investment horizon, investment environment is made easier uh, for us to be able to get all these pension funds to go into this uh, clever asset class, which is a little bit complicated, the uh, infrastructure asset class, let us get together and discuss. We are very, very ready uh, to get into that discussion. I want also to say uh, one of the other things that uh, we could also uh, be discussing is the whole area of uh, risk return uh, paradigm. Because in a lot of the discussions we've been having with World Bank and IMF, one of the things that we are asking ourselves is how do you calibrate risk in an African context? So that the way you look at risk uh, using you know, the modern portfolio theory of Harry Markowitz and all those guys of uh, uh, diversification, uh, those gurus that uh, we talk about, we need a way in which we can make the risk that is here in Africa and for, for, the, for that respect in Kenya and in the infrastructure space, risk that can be attractive or risk that um, money sitting in the US can find it attractive to come and be invested in this space. And so uh, I wanted to specifically mention some of those things so that as we move forward, we look for ways of working together uh, Roger, I'll be knocking on your door as we go uh, so that uh, we can identify uh, the things that uh, we, we can work together. Uh, certainly, and it is not uh, Kenya alone, the area of uh, revenues uh, is one area where we are seeing revenues are softening even before COVID. The revenues that uh, governments were collecting were, were getting softer and softer. Again, at the same time, the uh, money that uh, is available in terms of development aid, the grants that uh, were available developing countries, it's getting less and less and less. So this is time for us to be a little bit clever and then look at other sources of funding. And this is where private sector fits in very well. And who fits better than pension funds, which have got a long-term uh, profile and the asset classes of uh, infrastructure are uh, long time. And so you have got a perfectly asset liability matching. I want to say thank you very much and congratulate you uh, on this occasion. I thank you. Yes, Moya, thank you so very much for the, uh, the openness and proactive uh, words. Uh, I couldn't help uh, think about when you were talking about the PPP, uh, the phrase that uh, that we're going to walk together so we go far. Um, last is uh, I'd like to invite uh, Constantine Candia uh, to provide some closing remarks and vote of thanks on behalf of the CAFEC. Good afternoon and uh, good morning to those who are joining us virtually from the US. Um, I must say that um, this is such a special day for CAPFIC and um, as I was just sitting over there and listening to all what was being said, one thing I noticed was that uh, we've actually had a very long session of giving vote of thanks. Everybody that has come up here to speak today has been um, so helpful to the establishment of CAPFIC that um, when we try to think of the first day when we met at the, Cap at the KRA um, boardroom and we said to one another that um, as fund owners or asset owners, we felt that we were the least prepared in the entire value chain. Fund managers seemed to know what they were talking about. The regulator was very clear. The government was set to support us. But the fund owners, those with the money, were not aware that work had been going on for maybe something like five years before um, the sector came to speak to us. And I remember saying to them, okay, so the entire sector has agreed that the fund owners are going to invest in infrastructure. 
How about speaking to the fund owners and asking them to also be part of it? And so we did. And as has been mentioned, we formed um, uh, the big five, now Capfic. And one thing I'd really like to thank our supporters and partners for was that they told us one thing. They told us, if you want to be invited to the table, then you need to come together. Because there is no way we are going to invite 1,300 um, organizations, pension funds, to the table. We need you to work together. And we listened. And today, Buona um, Pierce, I want to thank you so much because you stood here and invited us to the table. It was such a wonderful moment to hear pension sector being told, come to my office, the door is open, let's talk. And that's all what we have always wanted. I want to thank our, let me start with those who believed in us the first time. USAID, the World Bank, um, MIDA, AFDB, they really listened to us and they said, you make sense and we will help you. In the initial first meetings, I remember them asking us, so are you registered? What are you actually registered as? And we said, no, we are not in a hurry to be registered because we have not decided what is the best form that we want to take to meet the aspirations and objectives of our members. And so today, I thank all of you for your support. I thank all of you for working with us, taking us through the motions to the point where we are now. And I want to thank the steering committee of KEPFIC who are here. May I kindly request you to stand because you have done a lot from providing your own resources. Our chairman, <laughs> Sadif. And this is not um, just one group or one sector. We have private sector, we have government pensions, and we are all working together as, as one. I want to thank our secretariat, Mr. Ngati and your team. Kindly spearhead, do stand. They say that by the time you see an event like this running very smoothly, so much has gone on behind the scenes. And indeed, so much has gone on behind the scenes. And your sleepless nights have not gone unappreciated. We really thank you. Um, I want to thank the media. I want to thank those who have joined in from the US. I really want to thank um, the, the, the hotel as well for enabling us to meet here today. And really, each and every one of you who has come here today, despite the COVID restrictions, we have tried our best to keep the distance. But this is an organization which I truly believe in because I believe in supporting and enabling investment into infrastructure in my country, Kenya. It is true that a lot of the investment here is funded by um, international and regional and other partners. We think that as Kenyans, we are ready to invest in our own country. And so with that, once again, I thank all of you. USAID, you've given us money to a company that is not registered. <laughs> we did not exist. We had a vision, we had a thinking, but you have walked um, the walk with us. World Bank has walked the walk with us, and you have accepted that for us to move together, we needed to move at this slow space. But now we are here, and we are ready to deliver what we envision. The big assignment that remains for us, members, is to go out and onboard our other members. The pension funds are very important to us, and you will see us embarking on a lot of um, training, capacity building, and ensuring that we deliver on our promise. And this comes from the understanding that when pension trustees appreciate what it is that KEPFIC has come to uh, enable them to come together to do, 
they will willingly want to work with us and invest in our country. Asante ni sana, God bless you, and let us continue. Do not tire. Let us continue walking this walk together. Thank you. Well, that brings us to the end of today's program and the end of today's launch. It is formally, Sandeep Gatia, formally launched. Ke Kefik is formally launched. You know, the one thing that I love the most about the whole idea of Kefik, it is Kenyans investing in Kenya's future. Now, there is no better example than a journey to self-reliance than that. So with that, everyone, thank you for tuning in from those from afar. For those in the room, thank you for appreciating the social distancing that we've, we've maintained. And have a great afternoon. <laughs>